Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, which today initially concerns itself with the intellectual and moral purity of the presenter. On the other hand, the presenter regards coilus interruptus as being at the other end of that spectrum. I don't like to involve you in stuff like that because you're too cynical. I am not. Yes, you are. I am not. You're too cynical, yeah. You're always looking for the main chance, you know. I'm I can't trust upon you to make a, a value judgment about anything because you're so twisted and gnarled. You know, I hope you don't mind me saying that. I think it's rather uh, uh, cruel. I can't depend upon you to make an, ob- an objective judgment because you're always wondering about what do you think of this and do you think of that. I am pure in many ways, whereas you're not. You're corrupted. And I hope you don't mind me saying that you're corrupt. You don't mind me saying that you're well, corrupt. Well, uh, uh, give me an example of my corruption. You can't do anything for pure goodness. You have to have a reason to do things. Give me an example. I can't give you an example. Well, there you are, then. I'm a bit embarrassed you, I No, oh, I can take it. I can Go give on. you plenty of examples. Go on, give me one example. No, I'm not going to take you. I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass you like this. See, I'm a pure spirit. You don't seem to realise that I'm pure innocence, goodness, personified. There's no side to me, whereas you're all English side. That's a snooker term, isn't it, for English? I don't mean English as in... I, put, I haven't Earth. heard that. I haven't heard that in years. Put a bit of English on. Put it. Put a bit of English yes, on that ball there. Yes, it is a snooker team. I haven't heard that. Put a bit of English in the blue. I don't know in the blue. <laughs> ah! blue ball, bring it up behind. No, the I ground. hope you don't mind me saying that you're crooked and corrupt. But you yeah. see, you can't do things for pure motives. Whereas I, being pure as the driven snow, and being uncorrupted in any way, and un unmolested by golf. The presenter is a fan of Joe Mahan's lesser spotted Ulster, but is nevertheless concerned that, like, for instance, every marathon runner, Joe may soon hit the local history wall. Will he survive, grit his teeth, and bear to listen to yet another yarn from a man with bad hair? You see, what happens is, whenever I talk to you, or whenever you talk to me and I listen, mm-hmm. I just stand and listen, yeah. like that. Yeah. But I that's be- not good enough in television. You have to be seen to be listening. And you have to react if you say, Cheers, boys! You have to go, Ho! Oh! You have to jerk to the left. Joe's starting to jerk to the left uh-huh. and put his hand up to his chin mm. and, and, and adopt a puzzled expression. And then he'll say on the voiceover, yes. I adopted a puzzled expression. <laughs> I loved it. I loved him running around with Balik last night. I loved it. it was mm-hmm. a great it, show. I, don't, I, I, I thought he couldn't be bothered, you know, really. <laughs> but you, I don't understand. Now, you got the suspicion he'd been there before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the suspicion he'd heard it all before. You see, there comes a time. You see, Northern Ireland's quite a small place. Now, Joe is going to hit the wall soon. Joe's he's going to go off his head. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to say, I, I've, at this I've, moment in time, <laughs> I couldn't give two hoots about your Viking excavations. I've seen them all before. I'm fed up with your frosted glass. I'm yeah. fed up. With your old scotching mill, I can't take another water wheel. I don't want to know how to cut turf. Leave me alone! <laughs> it's, a, it's, only, it's, only a, it's a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Because he's, he's, he's going to start to, to go back to the places he's been, he's been in the mm. first place. He'll cut people off. <laughs> We've heard that before. I know, I know, I know, I know. I heard that before. Right, 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 well, right, right. Let me be a boy. Help me a boy. Okay, I'm talking to you, right, Giorgio. A funny thing happened here two or three hundred years ago during the penal times. Now, do you see that wee house oh, up there? I heard all this before. No, you couldn't have heard this. That wee house up there, that's 300 years old now. You wouldn't know nobody looking at it, but a friend of mine was very friendly with a man who was related to the person who used to live up there, and they were saying to me that at one stage there was stuff buried underneath the floor, and there was an old mass rock underneath. There was a kind of a, a trap door, you see. They went down below, and there was a set of stairs going down, and they had this mass rock down the bottom, and they go down, and they go, ah, blah, 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 and all the priests would be down there, and there'd be all that kind of thing going on and the soldiers English soldiers would come and hook them all out of it and, and cut the heads off them and hang them up so I didn't carry on it's all up there you, you want to hear I the story left, I left Mickey Joe telling me about the mass rock because I've heard it all before you couldn't have heard it all before it's, it's only three or four years since you've been Mickey here Mickey Joe was a wonderful character but they're all over Ulster you see they'll wander off he'll just say he'll walk away and leave <laughs> Mickey Joe rambling The presenter and interrupters are haunted by old TV and radio ads. It's because they were fresh and new, you see, and escaped from the grey and depressing 50s dairy world in which they were forced to dwell. I remember an ad on UTV and it was one of the first wee songs that you learned to sing from the television. Yes. One of the first wee TV songs. Do you remember? They love to eat Kennedy's bread, it's hard to beat. 
Kennedy's bread, it's quite a treat. Kennedy's bread, J.B. Kennedy's bread, it's the best. Well, I was living in Dublin at that time, so I was singing uh, about a Dublin bakery. Johnson, Mooney and Brian have the best bread, bread that you can rely on. Give me Johnston, Mooney and Brian for the best of family bread. Ah, Johnson, good. Mooney and Brian for the best bread, bread that you can rely on. Give me Johnson, bread, Mooney and Brian Kennedy's for the bread, best of candy bread. bread. Right! Johnson, Mooney, Jimmy. and Brian have the best bread, bread that you can rely on. Give me Johnson. Well, come on, you do it. All do right. it as well. Do put, oh, all right. Put them together. It's hard to no, sorry, no. One, two, three, four. It's Johnson, Mooney, and Kennedy's Brian for the best bread, bread. You Kennedy's can rely on. Give me Johnson, Mooney, and Kennedy's Brian bread. for the best JP of family Kennedy's bread. bread. It's the best. <sighs> you see, that's north and south coming together. That's southern bread, northern bread. You know, why was there ever trouble? Troubles when we had songs like that. Yes. We could have put them together, brought our people together. Geordie, of course, appears relatively sober this time. The presenter is somewhat taken aback by this sobriety. Have you any female visitors this past while back? I had indeed. Mm hmm. Do you want to talk about it? Well, now, there's a lovely. There was two. No need to name names, just no. tell me stories. Go on. They'll come a long road, you know. Mm. Come away from Kira. Oh, say no more. The two of them came. <laughs> How long did they stay? Oh, but <laughs> near three hours. <laughs> yeah, right. I warmed the teapot. Yeah, you warmed the teapot? I made them with a potato. As, as long as that's all you did, that's Get the main thing. Out, yeah. Okay, <laughs> to hope you behaved yourself. I did. Didn't leap and upon them. I thought it was full of my dog. Hmm. Well, it's, it's good, lovely. you see, but you've still, you still got that, that X factor that Simon Coyle stole. Uh, well, you've got that X factor that makes the women flock towards you. Makes your, they're I drawn. Do, I don't know why they come. It's moths to the flame, Jordy. Don't knock it. Do you know what it is? Raw charisma. You know what I got animal, animal magnetism. That's what it is. Do you know what I got from the ducks? Thank Can't you think. Quaker oats. Quaker oats? Do ducks like Quaker oats? From the ducks. Aye. What? Really? Put a bit of weight on for Christmas. <laughs> I, I hope you're not going to slaughter your ducks. No, no, no. Well, there's a lot of people who's orders in, you know. Mm -hmm. And the geese, too. Have you orders in for Christmas already? Oh, I've orders in already. But how can you part with a duck or a goose that's been your friend for a year? How can you do that? Well, they take them out walking. I don't knock them, you know. See, this is the way of the farmer. I mean, we, we don't have emotional attachments, but you strike me as a man who could well have emotional attachments to some of the farm I animals. Do. You do, of course well, you do, because sure you're, you're an old softy. You're an old softy behind well, it all. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, would you well, not. Geez, do, Jerry, I can't keep them all. No, do you ever get a pang when you see that go goose disappearing around the corner in a strange man's arms? I don't just look. Oh, you look away? I do. We should. There he is going down a step. The presenter's never shirked from telling stories that painted him in a bad light. I suppose it's a kind of self-flagellation. He may gain sustenance from it. Anyway, today is no exception. He's look at him. He's yes. a vision. I don't think, I've never heard that anywhere else. Maybe peculiar to this part of the country. Because sometimes there are words that are peculiar to this part of the country and other parts of the country. But do you think you were ever described as no, a vision? No, often. Were you? I was once. I, I once heard myself described. Never. Yes. Do you remember years and years ago, uh, Craig Avon Bridge? Uh, people used to do a kind of a, 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 a walk every night. The boys would go out and they walk along, and the girls, you know, they'd meet each other. And there was a certain specified walk. You must have done this. Not Craig Avon Bridge. Yeah, you went to Archie Cassoni's and came back again. Yeah, but not on a regular. All right, basis. then. Okay. All right, then. Uh, uh, Carlisle Road. Road then. Yes, Carlisle Road. Down yeah. Carlisle Road. But anyway, I can down for the benefit of the people who aren't from Derry, Stoke, London. Derry, I apologise for these local references. Mm -hmm. You go down a street called Carlisle Road, and then you find yourself on Craig Avon Bridge. Then you walked over Craig Avon Bridge, and then. You, you you went to it was an Italian cafe called. See, we never had any money, so I know. No, no you never went in there. You we just no turned. You turned when you got to there. You looked in the window. You saw who was in, and then you turned and came back again. Yeah. Well, anyway, I was walking back with uh, two of my friends, and these three girls arrived, uh, you know, walking towards us. And we're going, "Hello, girls. How are you? How are you?" Yeah. That kind of thing. And then they walked back, and I, I, one of them said, "Are you Jerry Anderson?" I said, "Yes, I am." I said, "I heard you're a dirty brute." <laughs> <laughs> 
How accurate was that? Thank you for listening. Back tomorrow.